as we knew it was scattered. The Yodra tempted mankind with unimaginable wealth and formed alliances to forever destroy the monumental light. The light accepted mankind's decision for a greater plan. A battle echoed across the world and the monumental light was scattered. Taking a side indeed is very important. Welcome fellow disciples, this is the Alchemist. Today we are jumping into a pretty new survival adventure because Starving for Light, which is basically an ERPG, has a separate version of the game as a survival action roguelike game. Similar to the Spell Disk Survivor, yeah, I think this is the same case. Um, yesterday I was roaming that specific realm of the independent alchemy that starts with an R and there are just you know sub realms here and there uh, specifically to different game types and on the ARPG uh, sub realm I stumbled upon a post that is talking about star starving for light and what uh, different updates the game is getting and there was a really nice you know comment section there turned out that uh, last epoch game dev also commenting there uh, and he offered some amplification of the game and you know I just clicked on the, you know, the the video I checked it out went to Steam which listed the main game and it turned out there is a survival version so before we jump right into the fully fledged ARPG version which is going to take many many hours to blast I thought that it would be a wise idea just to try out the survival version. To be honest, it wasn't that wise, uh, if you ask me, because I've already played four hours since yesterday, and uh, how to put this, it is really hard to quit the game, because it has a really, really nice gameplay loop, which gives you the you know the sense of progress that you just want to go one more run and one more run and unlock one more weapon unlock one more new skill unlock the next map but you know I am getting a, at a, ahead of myself just cannot talk I'm too excited so uh, while this uh, marching almost metal soundtrack is uh, raging in the background let me read out the official description of uh, striving for light survival and then we are jumping right into the action because it is a fun game to play. Striving for light survival brings the exploration of procedurally generated skill trees to the arena survival roguelite genre. Unlock new characters, weapons, skills and maps, slay hordes of monsters and take on massive boss fights. And as you can hear this, uh, this game has everything to offer that the action roguelite you know, horde survival genre has to offer. So, without further ado, let's just jump into the play section and let's talk a little bit about how the game looks. So, for a first look, it's a little bit you know, intimidating because many weapons to choose from, many skills to start with. Ooh, what should I do? But the thing is that uh, the game originally gives you two characters to play one melee weapon to choose, one ranged weapon to choose, and a few skills. I do not remember the exact number, but you just choose a really nice set. You start the game with, you complete a level, and you complete different prerequisites of the achievements, and then you are gradually unlocking the different items and different skills. About the 
you know the art style of the game it's pretty interesting I, I don't see I don't think I've seen something like this before maybe because I do not play these types of games uh, very much that uses this type of art style but you will see that the monsters are animated in 3d but the character has a really interesting blend between 2d and 3d so your weapons are three-dimensional but your character is mainly looking like a 2d model and it kind of reminds me of old middle eastern like canonical stuff like old old church you know paintings and it gives you this some kind of um you know gothic style which goes pretty well with the game so for first i, I when i played that just stopped stopped the game and i was looking at the at the art style i was thinking that wait, wait a second what, what is this what, what is going on and after the second run i was just like oh man this is awesome so i think i hyped you up enough for the game so what we are going to do is choose a nice set of weapons and skill and we are just jumping right into the game so we can choose between the unknown wanderer and the unknown wanderer but the difference between the two is the male one has melee damage plus 20 percent and projectile damage minus 20 percent and vice versa so i'm going to focus mainly on the projectile damage because if you've seen my other videos before i am not a big fan of melee weapons in these types of games i am more like a projectile person uh, but the good thing is that we are going to rock a melee weapon and a ranged weapon at the same time and it doesn't matter because you know we can so we choose this so inherently we are having minuses and pluses to the specific types of weapons but on the journey on leveling up you will see that the procedurally generated skill tree offers you a really nice versatility and there is a chance to reroll some of those nodes so but I'm, I'm getting out of myself again so uh, I'm I'm going to start with the most generic uh, set that you can get when you start the game this is the short sword and this is the light staff so the short sword is going to do 10 damage one sack attack speed and we have the knockback strength critical hit damage 120% collect range plus five percent and also with the light stuff we're going to do 10 damage it's a bit a bit faster no knockback strength movement speed increased critical hit increased and all the great stuff and we have area of effect and collect range is also increased and there are many skills that uh, we can choose from and uh, i'm just going to re-emulate uh, the thing i uh, played for the first time so these are the new ones i unlocked so i'm just going to uh, you know uh, disappear those highlights here so I'm going to emulate the first run I ever did so it was both companion because every single time if I can choose a companion based build but I can summon companions or you know control them I am just going to take it so um, here we go choose a map we have different types of maps and basement is the first one so there are as you can see bunch of maps to choose from and the funny thing is that we have the tier 1 so I assume we're going to go and uh, beat all the maps and then the next tier is going to unlock so we have a bunch of things to try here so let's go to the basement and let's see how we are going to do this WASD to move we can zoom in the only thing I don't understand is why should I zoom in because you know I, I just want to have clarity to see all those enemies coming at me so I don't think that zooming in is a really good function, but maybe someone is playing totally zoomed in. Who am I to judge? Okay, we got to level up, but before I do this, I'm just going to say the space is going to be dodge, which is a really, really important factor of the game. And if you can see this, you know, the yellow dots here, we have three dodges by default. So we can just dash like three times in a row. Okay, so wave survived, 1 out of 20. Uncollected light fragments convert to elite enemies, which is a really bad thing. So uh, you are going to try to get those uh, light fragments to your character. Okay, so 
As you can see, this is the main node and we are going to start from all over this place. And the good thing is that if you choose a specific node and you reach a point that the node, that node is going to get, uh, you know, along and then we are going to have new things to click on. So uh, Empowered Companion is the first one we are having, but the thing is I do not have the companion right now because the skill we are going to use, it has to be unlocked first. But we can also have like increased attack speed, we can have maximum health, and the great thing is that maximum health is increased by one every single time you choose a node like this, but it also gives you a full heart, so it's not just going to increase your maximum health, you're also getting a extra health, which is really, really useful around the endish game. So we are going to blast it um, fairly, um, fairly often. Increase attack speed, as I mentioned. We have increased projectile damage, which is going to be a really, really uh, helpful thing for us right now. And as you can see, as I clicked on this node, the next one just got unlocked. And this is the procedurally generated thing uh, comes in. We also have additional projectiles, so we can shoot more projectiles if we will. And I would say let's go to this direction. And this is the exploding dodge that we unlocked. And uh, these are the smaller upgrades and these are the bigger upgrades. That's specific skills. Uh, okay, so we have the increased projectile and we also have some extra projectile damage. So let's go and blast those uh, increased projectiles. So as you can see, we are shooting two projectiles instead of one. We got we got some damage, so that's unfortunate. But here is our really nice dash skill. So as I mentioned, that the character looks like being in a two D, two two and a half D, or or whatever you want to call it. And for the first look, it was. Uh, you know, pretty strange, but uh, I start to like it a lot. Okay, so exploding dodge. Your dodge triggers an explosion, the attack size scales with your AoE size. So we got a nice AoE size by default, which was 10%. So I'm just going to blast with this. And the uh, range companion is summon a permanent range companion, which is stackable. I'm going to choose this because we uh, chose the um, you know, the range, com maybe the companion uh, thing. And we are also going to give a nice empower companion, which is your companion deal additional damage. We are definitely looking for this and uh, looking forward to this. And this one is a um, small dragon-y bat. Not sure, not even sure what this little companion is, but it doesn't really matter because it's doing really nice projectile damage against those enemies. So, um. Whatever this is, it's just good for us. And as you can see that we are rocking both, so it's like a really nice balance that we are also have a ranged and a, um, you know, melee weapon. And I do like this um, approach because the thing is that it is really hard to avoid enemies getting close. So since we are having a melee weapon at the same time, the melee weapon is doing a nice cleave or a nice damage here. So. If uh, enemies are coming close, we can uh, we can take them down pretty easily. Burning projectiles. So um, your projectiles burn the ground on enemy hit. Area scales with AOE size. Skills type range on hit applies burning to enemies dealing 10 damage per second. Additional damage total uh, duration of 3 seconds. But we also have minus 10% attack speed. I'm not going to take this one right now but I just wanted to show you how things work. And we also have the Meteor Blow, which is a another skill. Your melee attacks have a 30% chance to cast a Meteor to a random area in your attack direction, dealing 30 damage and applying a knockback to enemies. Meteor size scales with your AoE size, which is also stackable. So I'm just going to blast a Meteor into the uh, build we are using and some additional projectiles. Also, if you um, click on a node, for example, that you clicked on it, but seems like, ah, okay, maybe it's uh, screwing up the build or not my type. Right click and it is getting turned off. But you you can still choose the, um, the node next to it because you already completed the prerequisite 
but you can turn it off if you want to have this. So it is a also really nice way to customize your already working build slash you want to, you know, change a little bit of direction in middle of playing. So I really like it. So um, we have this little nice option that maybe if we clicked on something because we thought that it's going to be great, but after a few few turns, uh, turns out that, well, maybe that wasn't the best idea. And you just have that uh, freedom to do this, that I'm just going to disable it. Okay, we, let's say, you know, wasted a skill point, but does it really matter? I, I hope, I think that the end uh, difficulty, it's going to matter. But this time, while we are learning the game, I think it's pretty okay and it's forgivable. Increase projectile range. Your projectile has an increased range and speed. Definitely need this. And uh, we have these little stones. Shards of change. A shard with the power to change an unactive skill to a new random skill. I'm going to show you how this works because I think this is one of the best part of the game. So for example, increased condition damage. Oh no, we are dealing... Uh, are we dealing condition damage? Uh, dealing damage and applying knockback to enemies. No, this was the condition damage. So, um, just, you know, really quickly show you, get the shard, click on it, and we're having a different one. So this is the burning hit, uh, and we're going to choose that next time. So as you can see, uh, I forgot to pick up some of those light shards. So an elite just spawned thanks to it. So we are trying to move away from the elite because it's doing pretty nice damage and uh, it's fairly, fairly, um, you know, fast. But thanks to that, we have uh, our free dashes. And if I'm correct, we, we can have like uh, more dash along the way. But I am not 100% sure about this, so I'm not trying to say anything that is factually untrue here. Okay, let's try to take down the elite, but the timer is up. So, also, the really cool thing is that. You just have to survive, as the name of the game states. So if you cannot take down the boss, for ex for example, you can still go to the next level, and you don't have to stay on the specific level until you cleared all the enemies. So melee hits burn the ground below the enemies, uh, and uh, area scales with the AOE size. I found a typo there. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's go with the max health. I think we need one next to the plus and burning hit. Let's see how burning hit goes. I know that we are dealing lesser damage with the melee weapon, but uh, since we cannot, uh, you know, guarantee that enemies are not going to come close, I think it's a really nice addition that we are also applying some burn with our not that. Uh, not that strong melee attack, but steel press and melee attacks. And you know, I just want to talk about a little bit, uh, once again, uh, of the art style. Because uh, what I always uh, trying to say about games, and mainly indie games, to be honest, uh, I'm going to say it just really quickly, we are going to choose some notes here. How about some attack speed? Uh, I mean, critical hit, increase the critical hit chance and critical hit damage to all attacks and skills. Definitely really useful. Increase uh, some attack speed and also some additional projectiles. And okay, we are also having a uh, decreased attack speed, but we are, but now we are doing four projectiles instead of three. So you know, just going back to the art style. So every single time I buy a game, try a game, and uh, all the great things, I'm trying to look the game as a, look at the game as a whole. And even if I do not have uh, you know the fondest memory about the game, or I do not say that, ooh, uh, what about this art style? It is definitely looking extremely great, and who and how? But the thing is, in my opinion, let's increase the area of effect size. In my opinion, one thing is uh, just, you know, just more important than uh, having a extremely great graphics that is looking 
pretty stunning and wow and my you know my computer is melting thanks to that my eyes is melting no uh, in my opinion one of the most important things of a game is a really easily distinguishable art style and the thing is that you know let's let's put a um, really recent uh, example here on the line so there is, uh, you know, a really popular, not so popular now, ARPG out uh, on the market that everyone was waiting for for a really long time. It costed many, 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 many millions of dollars and a bunch of years to craft. And the thing is, the game is flopping because, you know, various reasons. You're not going to talk about this. But I do remember uh, seeing those uh, concepts, how the game is going to look. And on the concept art, it was extremely good looking. You know, it was pretty distinguishable. It was, ooh, come on, it's grim, it's dark, it's pretty gothic, it's wow. And this is going to be a blast. Even if I don't want to give a single penny to that company anymore, I was thinking that this is going to look great and this is going to be something and uh, you know as the game came out and turned out that the graphic the graphical style is just mundane it's just bland and it is looking great so it pleases your eye but it is not distinguishable at all it it, it looks like every new good looking game that was made with a commercially used engine that's supposed to be looking great, but um, that's it. And one of the biggest reasons I uh, dive deep, I dove deep uh, in the creations of the independent alchemy and changed teams, teams to uh, indie games is that every single time, okay, not every single time, but let's say eight out of 10, occasions. I buy a game, I install it, I start it, and after like a few minutes, I can clearly say that, okay, this is this game. And every time I, for example, look at a screenshot or uh, look at a, um, a picture on the internet, and I instantly know that, wait, this is this game. This is the XYZ game that I was blasting, and you know, it it, it does not look extraordinarily good, but it has a really nice art style that uh, let people distinguish and, uh, you know, recognize it immediately. And that's the thing with, uh, you know, uh, Striving for Light, that this type of character design that, that you know, the, the protagonist we're controlling has, that is really interesting 2D slash 3D, but but not 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 uh, specifically I just really don't know what is the specific name of this type of art style you know if you know this please let me know in the comments because I'm dying to know it um, so but the thing is that you already know that wow this game uses this and this is looking pretty unique and uh, yeah this this is a good one so um, in the years uh, of uh, playing games and I'm playing games like 25 plus years now and I do remember that having these arguments with my friends and my, my really good friends back in the day because I do remember that wow you're playing games but they look shit why, why don't you play this and this because it looks great it, it almost mattered my computer because it was made by with the engine whatever whatever you know serial number because this is looking great and, you know, the thing is that I was never really interested in stuff like that. Because if a game does not play good, I really don't care about how it looks. Because I am not playing games, and most of us are not playing games to look good. We are playing games to enjoy, we are playing games to get immersed, and we are playing games to discover new stuff, new adventure, and have a great time. And I think that... And I'm going to use the word forgivable because I think it uh, 
pretty uh, goes pretty well with what I'd like to say that if a game does not have a 100%ly really awesome looking good graphic but has a pretty good gameplay loop and mechanics and and fun fun to do and fun to play well I think it's definitely forgivable that it does not have the fanciest most awesome looking graphics and of course this is like you know taste so what is a good graphics for you and what is a good graphics for me it's totally different because it is a matter of taste and arguing about taste is totally pointless but yeah, I just want to put this here that I was genuinely spent minutes looking at the graphics when I bought the game yesterday and thinking about it wait a second something is off something is off but what is what is off and I realized it like after a few minutes and I start to focus on that specific element and you know the thing is I just cannot unsee it anymore but I'm liking it every single time a bit more uh, when I just you know start to play the game and if I'm correct and I got this uh, right from the message on uh, that, you know, subplane about ARPGs that this game was made by uh, a couple. Only two people. And, uh, you know, they have a fully fledged ARPG version of this. And they also have a survival version of this. And how awesome is that? So I really hope that, uh, you know, the game is getting all the deserved attention it needs. I really hope that the last epoch dev. Uh, had a nice impact for example you know sharing uh, the existence of the game and I do hope that even if just you know a handful of people are going to watch my video and say that wait a second this game exists that this looks really cool how much it costs three dollars and it has a bunch of things to do well I'm just going to head to Steam and uh, you know try it out and if this happens uh, you know I, I reached my goal so anyway, back to the game mechanics and uh, back to all the cool things. So currently we are now level 12 and uh, trying to go and pick up those uh, light stuff because uh, at the beginning uh, I was thinking that many of the games uh, uses this mechanic like okay you complete a level but it doesn't matter if you was not able to loot all those ascents or whatever experience giving stuff along the way because when the timer stops and the stage is done, uh, you are automatically getting to loot it. But it, this is not the thing here. And I was a little bit, you know, bamboozled at the beginning that, wait a second, why am I getting so much elites? Big enemies trying to kill me and I, I uh, you know, fail the map. And yeah, it turns out that if we are not looting this, well, uh, more enemies are just going to come and, uh, and try to take us down. So the increased melee damage is not something I'm looking for, so increased projectile damage is what we need. We get the shard and we just altered a, you know, inactivated um, uh, node on the skill tree. And we are just having a good stuff that uh, we needed for this specific uh, type of build that we are using. And there are many types of nodes and of course as uh, we are going to deeper into the game and unlocking more and more things we're just going to have more nodes to unlock more skills to use more skills to uh, you know synergize with and it is just really good and if you if you've seen this uh, I, I only have two characters unlocked by default but there was eight playable I think eight playable characters eight or ten playable characters and they also got different prerequisites like you know, complete a specific level at rank 2 and, and all the good things. So there is definitely a lot of content in the game that we can complete. How about additional projectiles and how about a maximum health because... Uh, because why not? Because I just really want to complete the level. Okay, get this one. And uh, I'm just running around. I really like these enemies. They look like some kind of um, bat type bats crossed with a bird like an owl and has this um, purple thing inside their chest and they do this mario looking uh, you know spinny fiery wheel thing 
which is pretty pretty annoying and uh, but but this is not the most annoying one the most annoying ones are the trees or or whatever uh or maybe the big big mosquitoes and they are doing this poisony projectile thing uh, diagonally and it has a really odd uh, timing signature uh, paired with it and it's really easy to, to just run into it and as you can see the nodes are just getting bigger and bigger it's pretty pretty um, you know extensive so how about scattering hit your melee hits create scattering projectiles on enemy hits we are just you know getting uh, slower and slower attack speeds and we got some achievements fast increase your movement speed to 1.5 unlock the something dodge which is a new skill or a new node that we can unlock next time from the next time on we're having an elite here because i was failed to loot uh, enough of those uh, light stuff so as you can see that moral it's coming that survival is uh, going to be harder and harder so what I'm trying to do is take down the elites as soon as possible and of course they are dropping more things so it's a pretty nice fair trade if you can survive and you can take them down well your reward is uh, getting better so we are having some nice scale shards that we can uh, just loot here so we can alter many of them and the good thing is there is no cap on the alteration so for example if I want to let's put a target farm a specific node I can blast it until I have a shard of change how about increased condition damage and additional projectiles 19th wave and at the, at the 12th, uh, no, not the 12th, the 20th, uh, a boss is going to come that we have to kill slash survive. So we're hitting a pretty nice amount of uh, HP. But I think if we have the chance, I'm just going to add one more uh, HP slot just to be, uh, you know, um, just to make things sure. We can complete the level and after this we're going to change to the other character the other unknown wanderer who has a uh, better damage with melee melee weapons and I'm going to show you a melee weapon focused build if you will and the thing is that the controls are pretty smooth very responsive you know just running around also the dash is really responsive so I really like that and no, it just I, at the moment I cannot say anything bad about the game yeah I put like as I mentioned like three and a half hours three hours into it uh, right now and of course it is going to maybe it's is going to change because after a while maybe it's going to get a little bit more boring or uh, it's getting too hard at the end ridiculously or whatever but uh, I cannot say anything bad right now so my goal is uh, is to unlock all the all the maps for the first uh, going through the first um, difficulty and then uh, unlock as many new things as I can and then we are just you know jumping into the second difficulty hopefully able to take them down unlocking new characters and you know a really, really nice amount of progression can be fine here in this game and this is what I like about games like this because you are clearly having a um, you know you can see what to unlock what are the prerequisites so you can target farm and you can go to that specific direction Ooh, that character looks really great I just you know hover the mouse over it okay what I have to do is survive without taking damage for like I don't know 10 10 different levels okay let's let's try to do this and thanks to that I will pick these types of weapons pick that type of um, you know skill and maybe I can just survive and uh, try to avoid taking damage for for as long as I can so also we have survived and what I really like is that the game has a implemented uh, feature that there is a leaderboard so you can use it with your YouTube uh, of course I'm using with my YouTube as you can see my uh, gaming handle here a YouTube handle here and also there's a Twitch uh, 
impl implementation so you can use it with that there's a leaderboard and of course we are like 1088 which is not the um, the best one but it's definitely great and it's also definitely great to see that seems like that uh, many people are playing the game okay so now let's choose the unknown wanderer and I am just going to pick the next one, the Flail, which has uh, better damage, it, it is faster, and uh, the knockback strength is much higher. And I was thinking that maybe go with some unstable potion, which has 7 damage, knockback strength 0, 70% chance to explode an enemy, hit leaving a poisoned area behind poison deal, 10 damage each 3 seconds for maximum duration of 9 seconds, so we have like 3, three hits. Free ticks, sorry, uh, which is going to be like 30 damage, but of course, as we upgrade the weapon, it is going to be more, I assume. So as you can see, 8 characters to play, and if I am interested in Darokin, unlock by defeat the end boss on wave 20th in the basement on difficulty tier 2. So now I know what should I do, but for example here, unlock by defeat the end boss on the Adora Arena on tier 3 or higher. And this goes as the same with the skills, for example I need the scattering sweep, unlocks by unlock 6 maps. Okay, so potion, flail, and let's choose a skill. 11 additional random skills will be added to the skill spawn pool. So the thing, that's a new thing, I just, uh, uh, you know, um, so wait, wait a second. Wait a second, I can choose more. Oh, the highlight was not the new one I uh, I unlocked. Wait a second, I can... No. So I can specifically make my build. Damn. See? Three hours in the game and I was able to overlook a pretty important factor which is going to change the whole game experience from now on. So, Ravaging Companion. Range Companion, Wolf Companion, for sure, and we have nine more to add, okay, let's, uh, or, I don't even have to add, I can just say that, okay, let's go with the Fully Companion build, whatever, what is this, uh, Chicken Companion, we definitely need Chicken Companion, have 10 Companion skill active, yes please, no, see, we are target farming for the Chicken Companion, just like this, in the forest. Depths in the thicket corrupted are lurking, waiting your arrival. Awesome. Toggle minimap. Yeah, that was the one. So we can bring the minimap to... So just a uh, sip of uh, coffee. So we can bring the minimap to the center of the map, uh, so center of the screen as well, just like in ARPGs. I'm pretty sure that we can change uh, the translucency uh, of the minimap. But I think it is pretty cool right now. So let's see what we're going to increase shot angle. Your range shot angle is increased. I don't think so. Increase area effect. The size of your area effect is increased by all AoE skills. Burning projectiles. So cyclic might. Your, uh, you swirl your melee weapons around. We are already swirling melee weapons around, but I think a little bit more swirl is just good. And we are increasing the sum attack speed. And also it's a really nice thing that every single time you uh, spawn into the next wave, uh, at least one one little um, you know heart is going to spawn. It's giving you a uh, better chance to survive. So as you can see I'm not really good with melee weapons, but uh, I just wanted to showcase the other scale of the balance, like not uh, focusing fully on the um, projectile style of the stings. Increase attack speed and increase melee damage. I think we have three, three points to spend, so like this two. And I'm also going to mo go for a uh, additional health because as you can see I am uh, taking damage a bit more often uh, <laughs> than I intend to. So it's uh, better saved than sorry. As they say. And the flail animation is just pretty cool. Flails are one of my favorite melee weapons, although it's technically not the meleeest weapon because it has a reach. 
so it's like a hybrid between uh, ranged and melee weapons but you know in in a game you just have to put every weapon into a category so it is a melee weapon okay and now we're going to unlock the notes so we have we can have the reach companion again because we just chose to have the companion based build but increase the projectile and uh, I, I don't want to use projectiles I want to do increased attack speed and then max health and we are back to the action. So as you can see, I just changed uh, one of my nodes on the fly because it did not suit my current build, um, my currently imagined build. And it is just that easy to do that. It's pretty cool. And also, uh, the thing is about these types of games that it's uh, also a really good game to be your main focus. But for example, just like me, I play these games when I am not making videos about them uh, while I having something on my second monitor. So uh, it is also a really nice selling point that if you just want to have a game that you can chill out with and also doing a nice amount of uh, progression, uh, you know, this game is a really good uh, one while having something on your second monitor to listen, to watch, to whatever. I am uh, currently I'm bench watching X Files. Why I'm playing uh, these types of games, so I have this uh, sense of multitasking, which is one of my favorite things in the world. So yeah, it's a it's a pretty pretty good one. So now things are getting a little bit more riskier because we cannot uh, keep our distance that much, unfortunately, thanks to the belt. But thanks to the nice dash we are having, uh, we can move away. Okay, so this was the enemy I was talking about, the, the lizard looking one, is uh, shooting this really annoying arching um, poison something, which is pretty hard to get away from. Another range companion and another increased attack speed. So the flail is spinning faster and faster every single time. So I am just hoping to achieve a uh, you know, fastest flail in the universe type of uh, thing. That we are just uh, mashing the HP out of those enemies as fast as we can. And of course, based on our newest uh, exploration, you can have a fully controlled uh, skill tree as you wish. And uh, of course, I think it's uh, really good when you are have a much deeper knowledge in the game and you are fully understanding how different skills are working and you experimented with them a little bit. But if you don't want to uh, do this or you do not have the time nor the willingness to play like fully with a fully controlled skill tree, you can just choose something that you like to get included or even you just don't choose anything and uh, let the game select you 11 random ones and um, you know we are just we are just having fun okay so many poison projectiles Ooh, okay we, we have to be a little bit more careful and increase melee damage yes please I'm just you know uh, really quickly dashing not through the snow, but uh, through the thick forest to get some extra health while taking down a nice elite enemy. Why the flail is spinning fast and I really like it, but I think we can make it much faster. So this is going to be my main goal in this playthrough. The this character that spin the flail as fast as possible. And of course survive and uh, complete the level. So maybe we are going to do some fair trades between uh, health and attack speed. So this one is double hit. You deal additional melee hit when hitting enemies, dealing skills with your melee damage. Of course we need this. And you know, just one maximum health to be extremely sure that uh, we can complete this. Just getting this one. And I think the two companions, the two ranged companions, are balancing out our mainly uh, melee focused thing. So they are sniping down those enemies uh, from afar, which is a pretty cool one. So I'm not sure 
if that was something in the head of the devs from the beginning that they are trying to give you a really nice way to balance your things but I think it's working working really nicely okay let's let's uh, try to take down no we do not have enough time okay so uh, let's see what is available here we have an increased movement speed I think it's a good one and I don't want projectile range so how about maximum health no how about some increased movement speed once again oh yes you can definitely feel the movement speed increase really nice if you've seen my videos uh, previously you might know that I am all about movement speed and attack speed in games like this or many many games to be honest uh, and of course uh, some cooldown reduction uh, is also really admirable but my main priority is always attack speed and movement speed not sure why I'm not a big fan of 20 weapons in any games I'm not even using 20 weapons uh, in tabletop role-playing games because I just think that they are I don't know they're lazy and maybe it's a really really hot take and some of you are going to be pretty uh, you know angry with me uh, two-handed weapon enthusiasts around there but I just I just don't like them unfortunately and this goes also with the staff so if I if I play a, a caster I also tend to add an offhand and a uh, another weapon in the main hand increase attack speed yes please and how about just changing this to an attack speed Ravaging Companion, summoning a Ravaging Companion and enemy death. You know what? Since uh, the reroll was that... Um, um, what was the word I was trying to say? A g really gracious reroll. Let's just go and uh, do the Ravaging one. On the death movement, look at this. Now the movement speed is uh, it's getting pretty insane and we are still having 9 uh, runs nine different levels to bring it to another level, a whole other level. But the thing is, we have to survive until this, so I'm trying to focus on this mainly and trying to not get uh, mesmerized by that uh, really fastly spinning flail. It's a tongue, tongue twister, fastly spinning flail. Yep, okay, max health. Here we go get that one in the upper corner oops just dashing away Ooh, a um, interesting uh, poisonous uh, frog frog lizard something like that in the forest there are many deadly creatures so we should be pretty careful around here okay oops dash away I just really love games where, where they have dash and uh, the thing is I am still not getting over it that uh, Holo Cure does not have dash by default. But you know the new Pathfinder game uh, put it in, uh, put a dash mechanic into the game because we requested it so it is a major win in my opinion. Increase shoot angle, no double hit, yes. And it's stackable, indeed, so we are going to do four hits. Is it four? No. But it's, you know, we are, we are dealing more damage every single time. We are doing a second hit, thanks to that. But we are pretty low on health, so uh, that's not fun. So for the next few upgrades, if I live this through, uh, I'm definitely going to add some HP. Hopefully, I have the chance to do it. Oh boy. Oh, we don't need those projectiles. Move away. Uh. Okay. Four seconds. Please, please. Oh, awesome. Level up. Uh, two points. So, one is here. And I do think that... Do we have any projectiles I mean not projectiles but any oh okay max health increased awesome so now we are having three and uh, now four 
But the thing is, I think we have to do a uh, trade-off here. Which, focusing on survival, not losing uh, more HP. So the next time we can get our more back. But, uh, unfortunately, that also means that an elite is going to get summoned. Uh, on the next map, because I am not able to get all those light essences looted. So, oh boy. So it's definitely getting harder this time. But if I am focusing just enough, uh, let's hope that we can uh, tackle this obstacle here. Cool. Okay, one point to spend, which is attack speed. Should I? Yes, because the cycle might is uh, something we also need once again. Okay, so we got some extra HP thanks to the generosity of every new level. Okay, try to get away from those frogs, leaping frogs. Okay. Get it. Great. But of course the timer is... Uh, just getting more and more every single time that we have to survive on every level or every wave. So it's definitely not the easiest. But yeah. Okay. Ooh. Uh, that was a that was a close one. Okay. Some nice level ups. Also some shards to change things. Which is always really good. The only thing I kind of miss in this game is that it would be really nice that if we are having a lot of shards at the end of a specific run that we completed, and maybe we can convert it to something else at the, at the end. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, um, already existing one. I just wasn't able to find it. No? Can we have a, pack? you know, can we have a, uh... oh boy, okay, another. Another cycling might. Cyclic might, sorry. Uh, ooh. Look at the speed. It's just really great. So I'm not sure if uh, it is not a already implemented feature, but you know, it would be nice to have uh, something to convert it to something else. Maybe buy cosmetics or whatever. Not even sure if the game has any cosmetics implemented. Maybe not. Maybe this is a uh, whole different level to put in, or they just haven't even thought about it. I'm not sure. Okay, move, move out. Ooh, okay. I think we can have this. I mean, I really hope we can have this. Because I'm pretty sure that completing a level using the flail is going to unlock something pretty great for us. Definitely a max health and double hit, double hit. Yeah, double hit is definitely a good upgrade. So we are just going to double down on those double hits. So we can blast it a bit more. So the thing is that... Uh, Thanks to this game, uh, I started to think yesterday that in the wait a second, you're playing many of those uh, hard survival action roguelike games. And the thing is that there are a bunch of these types of games out there, but um, maybe you should make a top five uh, in 2023 that all those action roguelike horse rider games because you're spending a lot of time playing these and uh, you know maybe it would be a uh, nice thing to summarize uh, most of these games in like I don't know six seven sentences what what are the pros what are the cons why should you uh, you know play them and make a list a like top five list of mine and of course putting some honorable mentions because Yesterday I was, uh, uh, you know, counting the games I am playing that uh, that are in this genre, and uh, I am having more than five, uh, to be honest. So I do have my uh, do have my top five list in my head, 
So if you're interested in something like this, uh, please, you know, let me know in the comments that if you definitely want to see, you know, top 5 action rule like Horde Survival games to play in 2023 and why, or, or you don't. It's also a good answer. Pretty sure I'm going to make it otherwise, but this would be nice to see that how many people are, you know, genuinely excited about this or would be want to see something like this. I'm not a big fan of making lists and stuff like that. But, you know, it could be useful for some reason. Okay, let's reroll this one. Increase melee damage, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. And increase melee damage once again. So two waves left. <coughs> Let's hope that uh, we can do this. Okay, nasty uh, elite here. Let's try to take it down. Okay. Ooh. That was close. Okay, this flail is just really, really fun to play. Now that we are doing brutally... You know, increased melee damage. Just spinning them down with almost 200 damage when it procs. It's just really cool. But the thing is, uh, we are definitely going to need a maximum health increase for the last time we are upgrading. Because the end boss is going to be something huge, if I remember correctly. And, uh, oh, wait a second until I just have to survive. Oh, of course, one health left. Oh boy, that is going to be a problem. We have three of these uh, rerolls here. So how about, how about, how about, how about? Mm -mm. Can I reroll this to a health? Increased area of fact. No. Oh man. Uh... Wait, why can I? Oh, wait, that was that was uh, turned off. Why? Oops, I clicked, I right clicked on this one. We were uh, using not enough uh, cyclic might. Uh, well, I just screwed up because it seems like that is not how you reroll these. Well, uh, dexterity, reach attack speed of two. We unlocked the dagger weapon. Whoo! Okay, 2 HP left, so how about just <laughs> moving around, dashing around and uh, try to survive, what do you say? Duh. Of course not like this, and of course uh, not like this. Okay, maybe I should keep away uh, from the tree. If this is even possible... Okay, no, it's not going to be possible. Oh boy. Uh -uh. Okay. 35 mi seconds, not minutes. Okay, 35 minutes would be insanely long to survive with 1 HP. Of course, if you're a seasoned player, pretty sure you can do it, but... Oh, come on, please. That would be just extremely great. 15 seconds. No, no. Oof. Please, one. Yes. Oh, boy. That was... Wow. I started to get dizzy. I focused too much on my character. Awesome. So, 806, and we unlocked the dagger. Ooh. What the dagger does. Let's see, just before we summarize our experiences. Uh, nice attack speed, knockback strength, critical chance, critical hit damage. Cool. Well, we cleared the first two maps and uh, we discovered that we can fully control our skill tree. Uh, if we want, but if we don't want, we can get a totally random one. So there are many new weapons to unlock and many more skills left to unlock. So let's summarize what we've just, you know, done here. 
So, Striving for Light Survival is a survival version of Striving for Light, the ERPG game. The game currently in a very positive state and it costs like three dollars. So what costs three dollars nowadays? Nothing, basically. And uh, the game has a really nice amount of things to unlock. You have to survive, you know, 20 waves, a big boss at the end, and you have this procedurally generated skill tree that you can alter manipulate, turn off already bought stuff, you can change un unactivated things, and you have a bunch of weapons to choose from, you have a melee and a ranged weapon, and skills you can blast at the same time. The game has a really interesting graphical style, the, everything is 3D besides your main character, which is a 3D slash 2D whatever, please. Let me know in the comments if you know what is the exact art style of this, because I am just really excited about this. The game also has a Discord channel, which is pretty populated, so let's go on. Uh, the game also has uh, a implementation with uh, YouTube and Twitch, so there is a leaderboard, so you can see how well you, um, you know, progressing. So that's it, basically. If you like... Horde survival action roguelike game, striving for light survival is definitely something else. It has to offer many many new things to discover, so link in the description if you like, like the game, go and try it out. And with this, I just wanted to thank you for tuning in once again. And if you like this video or other videos on the channel, please consider putting on the journey boots with me and going on an endless journey to find cool and really good alchemical creations of the independent alchemy aka indie games and if you like the video please give it a nice thumbs up so otherwise not otherwise but in this case uh, it is going to get promoted to more people and maybe some people are going to pick up those games thanks to my videos and if you have anything to add about the game please type it down in the comment section and with this, I was the Alchemist for today, and I see you with another video tomorrow.